On top of being covered in glitter, Dreary Starmer gave people plenty to talk about with his speech in Liverpool yesterday. He outlined his plans to solve the problems in the housing market. It's time to build one and a half million new homes across the country. <laughs> Opportunities for first-time buyers in every community. New development corporations with the power to remove the blockages. New infrastructure to support families and communities to grow. Roads, tunnels, power stations built quicker and cheaper. And a new effort to rewire Britain. The national grid moving faster, a lot faster. Well, the Labour leader said he would bulldoze through the planning system in England if his party wins power. Well, joining us now is the Labour leader of Hounslow Council, Shan Shantanu Rajuwat. Shantanu, it seems fairly sensible from Sir Keir trying to solve the problems in the housing sector, doesn't it? It is incredibly sensible and it was really great to hear. Thank you for having me, by the way. Um, Keir Starmer offering some solutions for the housing uh, problems that we face in Hounslow. We've got 7,000 people waiting for housing. We're in desperate need. Uh, and you contrast what Keir Starmer said yesterday versus the lack of anything that the Prime Minister said uh, at their conference uh, the week before. It was really refreshing uh, and it was something that we in local government have been calling out for for a long time, but also in terms of the infrastructure spend um, the, the wealth uh, fund as well. There's a plan there uh, that I think is really welcome and the country's calling out for. Shantanu, welcome to talk today. Um, interestingly, and, I, and I'm, I'm with you actually, I mean, I've said this for a long, long time, housing is the number one concern. And when I tell you what I think, because we talked about it yesterday, please don't think I'm being cynical. This is aimed at all politicians. We know, don't we, that every single politician will stand up and will say, we need more housing. Yeah, we do. But when they get back to their constituency, Shantanu, and I said this yesterday, I think it was Matthew Pennycook, who's the local, the shadow local housing minister, was, was really enlightening on the show yesterday morning, mm. that actually when you get back to your constituency, wherever you are, they go, yeah, we do, but not where we live, mate. I was interested in this Brownfields construction, but also what Matthew Pennycock Cook said yesterday, which was, and I quote, we can look at some green belt areas, disused petrol stations, areas that actually aren't of natural beauty and aren't happening. What I want to hear is whether Keir Starmer genuinely means what he says. How is he going to afford this housing? Because there is no doubt, you know this, locally and nationally, we are crying out for more accommodation, right? Oh, uh, uh, and absolutely, you, you, you make the, the, the valid point there. But I think that there is a way of uh, getting through this. And uh, that, that thing that you said around people not wanting it on their back door, in their back garden, uh, we understand that. And, and so in Hounslow, uh, as a local authority, when a developer approaches us or when we are developing something, uh, we start conversations very, very early with stakeholders. And it's not about just physical buildings. It's about the communities that you create. That's how we will drive this country forward. So there are lots of early conversations that kind of go on. Uh, I think Rachel Reeves in her speech outlined some of the ways that we will recoup uh, money through uh, better taxation. I, I call it better taxation. Uh, that will help. Um, better but we taxation. Are gonna have to be you mean tax We're going to have to work with the private better, sector. Better taxation. I have to take you up on it. You mean tax the wealthy even more, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, if, if those with the deepest pockets should contribute more. The problem with that, my friend, and I'm... Listen, I'm just doing a television show. The problem with that is you will drive away all the people that are successful and you will alienate those people who will not vote for it. That is an absolute fact with the people like it But or are not. you happy with the NHS? Are you happy with the way the trains work? Are you I didn't happy say with that. Sewage? I didn't say that. We I need think everybody, more... I think everybody should pay. Genuinely, I mean this, right? But the problem you've got... And I'm not one of those people. You know this. What about non-doms? Non yeah, I don't disagree with non-doms at all. No. But I think you have to be very careful because I think you need... This is what I would say about Starmer, actually, Shantan. I'll be interested in your thoughts. I think growing up, we were talking about this yesterday, weren't we? The Labour Party looked to be sort of uh, a one-trick pony. You know, the, the criticism always was, oh, print money, you know, promise this, pay that. Actually, the Tory party has the highest taxation in 70 years, the biggest debt we've ever had, crumbling schools, a useless NHS, a, a border control that's non-existent. I do see this as a seminal moment. That's why I think those sorts of messages, you need to move beyond that with more meat on the bone. That's all I'm saying. And, and I've been quite open to what Starmer said this week. So, so I don't disagree with that necessarily, but we, we've got to be clear. A, a speech to conference sets out a direction of travel. The detail, the costings, all of that will come when we, when we launch the, uh, the, the manifesto. That's the correct moment uh, in which to do that, because then you're really giving people the choice and you're giving them everything in front of them so they can make those informed choices at the ballot box.
Do you think he's done enough this week? No, Vic, uh, Vic, I called you Vic now, the one. Nick and I have been talking about... calling me his wife's name well, now. You, we've been working together for too long. Work wife. <laughs> um, do you think he's done enough this week? F away from the faithful, inside the hall. Do you think that, that that floating voter, that core amount of people who will make a difference, do you think that people are listening to Keir Starmer? So... I think there's a real deficit of leadership um, at, the, at the top level. Rishi Sunak is offering us absolutely nothing. His conference proved that. Uh, so I think, yes, absolutely, Keir Starmer has done enough. Uh, for me, I voted for him uh, when he became uh, leader of our party. I think he's always done a good job. Part of his mission was to change the way the party operates so that we're more relevant to that floating voter, as you, uh, as you talked about. Uh, now it's about putting me on the bones of policy. What difference will Labour make in power? And I, I'm desperate for Labour to be in power because we've had 13 years of decline. Yeah. In my council, I have faced austerity. I, I was first elected in 2010. In that time, I've done nothing but cut services, and that is the Tory agenda. Well, let's talk about hope. Let's talk about ambition. Let's talk about service. That's what Keir Starmer has achieved at this conference for me. And Shantanu, just really quickly, what's the reaction been like to the glitter moment yesterday <laughs> with Starmer? Because I, I think he dealt with it incredibly well, and I hope that it hasn't mm. overshadowed the message of his speech. But what's the feeling from, from within conference about how that was handled by Keir? So, uh, uh, yeah, a terrible moment at the start of what was a very, very big speech for, for, for Keir. But uh, from my perspective and from those that I've spoken to, he handled it like a true statesman. Uh, you know, this is someone who is ready to govern for, in the interests of the people. It could have derailed his speech, uh, and I think it probably was designed to derail his speech. Uh, and yet he, he talked about it, took his jacket off, literally rolled up his sleeves. I mean, that's an amazing moment, uh, and just got on with giving out his message. And I think that's really positive, and that's... I, I don't think it has derailed that, the, the speech and, and the moment in time that we were in.